welcome everyone. Thanks for having me back. Um, I wanted to first start the presentation with a demonstration of what we're going to build. And this is a sample comments page that I'm intending to use for um, feedback from a customer or something like that. And I'm going to select some text, type in there, so that we can see when we leave the text field that the document grows and expands accordingly. Give my screen just a minute to update out there. So what we're looking for here is that the document, which is currently a single page, as we continue to add text to this file, will grow and spill onto a second page when it runs out of room. We're going to continue this sample file and we'll change the second page so that we no longer have the company logo at the top of the page, that it only uses that on page one of the file. As we're going along, if you have questions, I invite you to uh, type them in the chat Q&A pod. But I am going to ask a little bit of information. When you do that, please be specific with your questions, because as the people who are answering your questions might be reading something else at the time that you type. So the more specific you are, the easier it is for them to reply. All right, so we're going to take a real brief moment here to start a new document and create that from scratch. So I had a couple of notes about audio. Is it getting any better? All right, I am going to go back to that sample file for just a minute because I am a designer that does not like to do things twice if someone else has already done the work. So on the master page of the original sample file, there is the company address, logo, and telephone information. And I'm going to use the same layout on the new document. And I don't want to have to recreate those items. So one of my absolute favorite features in Designer is the ability to create custom library objects. And in the library palette on the right-hand side of our screen, we have library groups. And I previously created one called the AUC Demo. And I want to add this header information to that demo group of the library. So by selecting all the objects on the page, I'm simply going to drag them into my library group. And when we drop them there, it prompts us for a name. And just in case we drop them in the wrong section of the library group, we can change that information and tell it OK. So now as we continue building our new document, and we switch over to our master page. We do not have to recreate those items. We can simply drag them on from the library palette whenever we need to use them. One of the things that I like on the master pages is the ability to change the content frame. So the pink border that you see on the master page area is called the content area. And by altering the size of the content area, it restricts the location on the design page where we're allowed to place fields or other objects. And it works kind of like margins in a regular document. So now we have our master page set up. And we're going to put on a text field. I'd like to change the caption so that that appears above the field. I'm going over to the Layout palette and changing the position to the top. We're going to widen that out to fill the width of the page and alter the caption. Now I would like the text field to grow as someone continues to type information in there. And that's going to require a couple of different settings to be turned on to work. So let's first take a look in the object palette we need to allow multiple lines. Now simply turning on multiple lines is not going to make this start working. But I want to show you each step of the process so you understand which one causes the errors that occur while we're working. So if we go ahead and preview right away, and I type in a word or two, 
you'll see that it took all the information that I've typed in that field, but I've got this plus sign over on the right-hand side showing me that it's being cut off. And when I enter the text field again, we have a scroll bar to work with. Now it does accept multiple lines, but it does not automatically grow the way we need it to yet. Going back over to the palette, in the layout menu, we're going to ask the height of that field to expand to fit as needed. That way, as they continue to type, the text field will grow. Now I want to place a static text area below the existing text field that we have. because this is going to present another problem when we first start to work with load documents. I'm going to save my file. And I am going to make sure that it's saved as a dynamic PDF form, because otherwise the dynamic features that we set up simply won't work. And now when we preview our form, and we continue to put some information in that field, we'll see that it grows. But if you notice here, the thank you for your feedback didn't move down. And now it's kind of running over the other information that we've already provided. So we're going to go back in Design View and talk about what's needed to fix that particular problem. By setting up the document so that it can dynamically adjust in the content, we also have to tell the document that it's flowed content and that the objects that are on the design page should move out of the way. So we're going to select the page subform, which if I open the hierarchy, is currently titled Untitled Subform Page 1, since I have not renamed it yet. And in the object palette, we're going to change the content type from position content to flowed. What that does is tell designer that each object in the hierarchy should be laid out in the order you see them in the hierarchy in the next available position. So now if I attempt to move this over to the side or down anywhere else, it simply won't let me because it's taking the next available space. When we preview our document again, and we paste some text in there, this time we'll see that the thank you note does move down and stay out of the way the way we designed it to work. Back in Design View, I want to take this a step further and that if the user types in so many comments that it spills over to a second page, I would like to have page two not contain the header information. So on the master page, we're going to insert a second from the Insert menu, New Master Page. And on the second master page, we don't need that large header area, so we'll drag the content space back up. And now on the first page, we need to tell Designer that we only want to use it one time. So by selecting the first master page and opening the Object Palette, we're going to restrict that page's occurrence so a minimum of one and a maximum of one. Going back to the Preview tab now, if we were to type in enough content, waiting for the screen to update, 